When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink, but I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking smart water for years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds. I love Chic Branding and Smart Water's sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. Smart Water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart Water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Zoe, and you're listening to Climbing in Heels for your weekly dose of glamour, inspiration, and of course, fun. We're coming to you this week with an early release episode talking about fashion's biggest night, the Met Gala. I was able to join the E! News team to share some of my favorite looks from the evening, but of course, I wanted to share them with my pod listeners too. So let's jump right in. For everybody listening to Climbing in Heels, as you may or may not know, the lovely Rachel Zoe joined the team over at E! News and did a little roundup of some of her favorites of the Met Gala red carpet. We, of course, wanted to share it on our pod as well. So, Rachel, do you want to jump into a little bit about the theme of last night and kind of like the general vibes we were seeing? The theme of the Met Gala this year was Sleeping Beauty, the reawakening of fashion. So I think the thing that's important to note about the Met Ball is that there's always a theme and people interpret that theme in a myriad of ways. And so I think everyone felt that this would be tons of ethereal and goddessy and, you know, very Sleeping Beauty. But I think a lot of people took the dark side to it, you know? A dark fairy tale. Yeah, a dark fairy tale. Like, as we kept saying yesterday, it was sort of like the Aurora versus the Maleficent. Right. Um, Yes. You know. Which that kicks us right off. We should jump right in. A woman who took the dark side not only once but twice on the carpet was Zendaya. Yes. Yes, indeed. first look was really incredible. And I feel like because she was co-chair and because she arrived and walked the carpet in her first look early, it really kind of like set the tone and changed how everybody was thinking about the theme. I think initially people thought it was going to be like all floral, all pastel, all very wispy, delicate fabric and all of that. And I think boom, Zendaya hit the carpet and it was like, hold on. We we didn't think like 360 of the theme and there is this dark side of of this like spring awakening, which was really interesting. Exactly. And what was interesting is we saw that quite a bit, you know, I mean, we saw it with Kendall Jenner. We obviously saw it twice with Zendaya, Zendaya in her first look, which was very, very intricate and very thematic, honestly. And it was by John Galliano for uh, Maison Margiela. Um, And for those of you that don't know, um, John Galliano was has had his own namesake brand for many many years alongside of that he was the creative director for uh christian dior for many many years yeah. and and has been at uh maison Margiela for the last few years and so what was interesting is that if i saw that without knowing i would have said that is a john galliano dior couture creation John Galliano like was working that night. Yeah, he was, <laughs> which is so, it's so interesting because, you know, historically when I look at or think of and, and went to countless Galliano shows, I mean, I understand why so many people went to him to create for this theme. It makes absolute sense because he's, he always has this very, you know, like, you know, there's, there's a real, there's a fairy thing about him, you know, the, the classic yeah. Galliano bias slips to the, you know, to the incredibly ornate um, couture that felt like, you know, medieval royalty, you yeah. know, so it, it, he's brilliant. He masters the goth fairy tale. Like, he masters the goth fairy tale. Yeah. And he, he, he absolutely does. He, he a hundred percent does. And, um, well, yeah. as if on cue, another co-chair, the lovely Jennifer Lopez, yes, went to the other side of the theme, um, 
in a really beautiful Scaparelli gown. Yes, she did. And you know what? At first, I was not as in love as I wanted to be, um, only because I feel, you know, I felt like we've seen JLo in this before, you know, something like it. Sure. But then as I watched videos of her in it and I dug deeper into it, I realized what an actual masterpiece it is it's and stunning. and how and how difficult it must have been to actually wear it you know but but I also think with Jennifer like um you know Jennifer Lopez is someone who you know it it's it's wild because somehow it all works on her and then she obviously wore this insane Tiffany necklace to sort of complement the butterfly wings to sort of lay perfectly in between the butterfly wings, you know? Yeah. We, we made a joke last night that um, JLo left no Tiffany diamonds for anybody else. at the gala Cause that necklace is extraordinary. Um, beyond, 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 beyond. Yes, absolutely. Looks beautiful. Very, very uh, minimal makeup for her. Yes. Um, um, yeah. By the way, that was, I think very interesting. And I think very strategic that, she was trying to be softer, you know? Yes. Um, and I think that she was, was being uh, awakened. Yeah. Right? She was being awakened. And it was interesting. Cause at first I was like, what's missing? Oh, it's her lashes. Oh wait. They're like a natural color lash. Okay. Wait, it's yeah. all, it's all, it's all settling in. And, you know, she really looks stunning. And then I thought what was interesting is how, when her and Zendaya posed next to each other, like what a gorgeous, like juxtaposition that was you know yes it was, it, it, was, it, it, it like po- perfectly puts together the evening I feel yeah, like a hundred agree um moving on to our eternal queen uh Nicole Kidman yes and Balmain yes um yes yes and just yes. forever Nicole <laughs> yes I, I I I in in Balenciaga in Balenciaga. Oh, in Balenciaga, not in Beaumont. I'm thinking of Nicole uh, Kidman in Balenciaga was absolute perfection in every possible way. It was based off a historical Balenciaga dress couture piece from the 1950s, and it was recreated. Um, and it was absolutely stunning. It was beyond stunning, and I just um. I was just blown away. I mean, honestly, just the way she stands. But I thought what was amazing was, you know, it's interesting because I think part of me is like, okay, we maybe wanted her hair pulled back in a top knot there, right? Like Mm -hmm. to to kind of go with the sculpting. And yet on her, it worked so beautifully to have complete, like a completely effortless blow dry. Although knowing a deer who did her hair, I'm sure it was a lot of effort. Right. Um, but cause a deer doesn't just do a blow dry. Um, and then of course, Gucci Westman who did her makeup. I mean, I felt that her, her glam was just perfect. It was like fresh and gorgeous. And her dress was so like severe and sculptural, but like it somehow really just worked. Yes. She's just perfect. a statue. Mm-hmm. A statue. Um, well, why don't we move into, um, your Oscar de la Renta Queens? Yes. So, um, you know, it's interesting because I think something to note about Met Ball or the Cannes Film Festival or any of these things, it is very, um, it is so hard for these designers because there's so much time. I mean, every one of the dresses that you saw on the carpet took hundreds and some thousands of hours um and you know in this you know there could be a season where oscar de la renta has nobody or any designer has no one that placed on the met gala carpet last night and last night oscar i think dressed custom i think it was like six or seven they had a lot yeah and you know from pamela anderson who was stunning um, Chris Jenner looked extraordinary. I loved her huge, like gorgeous, like cloak with embroidery. She was like this, you know, like this queen that she is in yes. the long coat over the sheath, which was stunning, all white, gorgeous. And the coat was like cathedral length. And the and, emerald was, oh my God, the oh. emeralds, the emeralds, yeah. the emeralds can't beat those. And then, um, Kylie, I want to talk about Kylie. Kylie Jenner looked 
probably the most beautiful. I was like, in terms of what she was wearing, I would say it was my favorite look of Kylie ever that I've yeah. seen. Because you um, typically, you always appreciate the fashion of Kylie, but I do. You usually skew so Kendall. Yes. That, yes. <laughs> that, yes. That I know that you in yes. fact, were like blown away by Kylie last night. Well, because I think sometimes I'm just such a fan with certain people of, of less. And I, I am a huge believer that you can create incredible jo- drama without being over the top, like too much. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like you don't have to be, you don't have to wear what Cardi B wore to, to, to be the the moment. And I feel like her simplicity but still with drama and architecture and like on theme and just, I just thought she looked beautiful. She really did. I just loved it. It was so complimentary to her, you know, and she's so young that it's nice to see her look fresh and, you know, and, and effortless, you know, when it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink. Like most working moms, I'm constantly juggling my work and my family life. And sometimes all that decision-making is truly exhausting. But at least I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking Smart Water for many, many years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds and has added electrolytes for taste. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, every morning, is head down to my kitchen to drink water. Hydrating with Smart Water is my favorite way to start the day and making that simple choice is such a refreshing change of pace from the whirlwind of my life. Starting my day by focusing on myself and my health is so important to me. I'm always a lover of chic branding and packaging and Smart Water's sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. I absolutely love how the rounded bottle fits perfectly into my kids' side pockets for school or camp. Smart water even looks chic displayed on any counter or vanity in my house. As most moms know, it can be tricky to get kids to drink enough water, but my boys absolutely love the taste of smart water and the sports cup is great for their very, very active days. Smart water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. My dad works in B2B marketing. But I never really knew what that meant. Then one day, my dad came by my school for career day and told everyone in my class he was a big MQL man. Then he just kept saying things like, the more MQLs, the better, over and over. My friends still laugh at me to this day. I think it means marketing qualified lead. One thing's for sure. I'll be known as the MQL man's kid for the rest of my days. Why couldn't you just be a fireman or a lawyer? Why? You ruined my life, Dad. Not everyone gets B2B, but LinkedIn has the people who do. And with ads on LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people based on job title, industry, likelihood to buy, and more. Start converting your B2B audience into high-quality leads today. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash customer to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash customer. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So, buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing, and of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink. Like most working moms, I'm constantly juggling my work and my family life, and sometimes all that decision-making is truly exhausting. But at least I don't ever have to overthink my water. 
I've been drinking Smart Water for many, many years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds and has added electrolytes for taste. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, every morning, is head down to my kitchen to drink water. Hydrating with Smart Water is my favorite way to start the day and making that simple choice is such a refreshing change of pace from the whirlwind of my life. Starting my day by focusing on myself and my health is so important to me. I'm always a lover of chic branding and packaging, and Smart Water's sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. I absolutely love how the rounded bottle fits perfectly into my kids' side pockets for school or camp. Smart Water even looks chic displayed on any counter or vanity in my house. As most moms know, it can be tricky to get kids to drink enough water, but my boys absolutely love the taste of Smart Water and the sports cap is great for their very, very active days. Smart Water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart Water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. When it comes to living life, there's a lot to overthink. Like most working moms, I am constantly juggling my work and my family life, and sometimes all that decision-making is truly exhausting. But at least I don't ever have to overthink my water. I've been drinking Smart Water for many, many years and truly love its pure, crisp taste. It's vapor distilled through a process inspired by clouds and has added electrolytes for taste. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, every morning, is head down to my kitchen to drink water. Hydrating with Smart Water is my favorite way to start the day and making that simple choice is such a refreshing change of pace from the whirlwind of my life. Starting my day by focusing on myself and my health is so important to me. I'm always a lover of chic branding and packaging and Smart Water's sleek bottle shape makes it the perfect accessory for any day bag, workout tote, or backpack. I absolutely love how the rounded bottle fits perfectly into my kids' side pockets for school or camp. Smart water even looks chic displayed on any counter or vanity in my house. As most moms know, it can be tricky to get kids to drink enough water, but my boys absolutely love the taste of smart water and the sports cap is great for their very, very active days. Smart water is the smart way to hydrate no matter what you have going on in your life. Life is full of choices. Smart water is a simple one. Visit drinksmartwater.com to learn more. Yes, that leads me to two other minimal beauties that you were obsessed with, which is Kaya Gerber. Yes. I, you know, I loved Kaya. Listen, I I love Kaya because I, I love how effortless she always seems to me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I don't think that Kaya ever is, she just has never once looked like she tried too hard. Um, and so I, I really loved last night. She was giving me this sort of you know, it's funny. I don't know that she felt on theme when I think about it. Right. But but she gave me like young Jackie Onassis. You know what I mean? She gave me Jackie Kennedy vibe. She was definitely but, giving the breath of spring. <laughs> yeah, it she was. And also I think it was reminiscent with the sort of 90s supermodel hair and like a very simple like Prada sheath with like matte paillettes. And I think it's just a great example of someone who's like, I don't want my look to overpower me, you know? Right. Um, right. And I um, want to talk, I want to talk about Phoebe. I was going to at least say, yeah. picking right into uh-huh. our little ballerina. Yes. Phoebe Denever is, you know, for those of you not familiar, if you are not as obsessed with Bridgerton as I am, and she's stunning and she's amazing on Bridgerton and she's such a talented actor, but she's also this like, very breathtaking ballerina ethereal type of looking person. And I think she like really leaned into that with this. And I think everything about this look to me was flawless. She looked like sleeping beauty. She looked like she could have been one of the, like the fairies in sleeping beauty. She was giving me fairy tale fairy. Her glam was flawless. Um, it was absolutely flawless. Her skin is so fair. Like she just, the whole look for me was perfect. I would not have changed one thing. Um, and and she always wears very minimal jewelry too. She always wears very, very minimal jewelry. We are big Victoria Beckham fans over here. Yes. It was custom Victoria Beckham. It was stunning. 
so exciting for the VB team. Um, Cause she just literally looked like an angel, like a pe- pastel pink angel. So stunning more honorable mentions is your girl, Jessica Beale. Yes. She was absolute perfection in Tamara Ralph couture. Yes. I mean, she really got the memo. It was absolutely gorgeous. I loved the color. It was like the, this beautiful shade of pink. It was almost like a corally. Yeah. Pink. Yeah. It was, it was, it was corally and it was gorgeous. And it was like just leaves and just heavenly. Honestly, I just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, yes, it was gorgeous. And, and another woman who wore a bold color that we loved was Carrie Washington. I loved Carrie Washington. I just felt, you know, again, like unexpected. It was purple and the flowers just everywhere. It was like an explosion of flowers, but in all the right places. And I loved it. And I think the hair, I don't know that that felt like the fairy, but yet I felt it was true to Carrie. And I think it was kind of mixing the the sort of dark and light side of this theme. You know, I think that was sort of the thing, but it almost gave me like an old Hollywood vibe. Oh, absolutely. She you know? was very, very old Hollywood. Um, but I mean, her body in that gown is just um, crazy. She looks crazy. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Or just. Um, well, we have to talk about your Sparkle Girls last night. And yes. some incredible gowns. Unbelievable. And some, you know, the thing about the Met Ball is there's so many people that go up that carpet and up those steps that you miss a lot of them, honestly. Yeah, you um, do. You, you really do miss a and lot we, of them. We did. We missed Irina. When we were watching the carpet, we somehow were distracted or doing something. And, and we yes. missed Irina. And she was one of your sparkle girls and looked to die. Yes. Irina Scheik and Carly Kloss, both in custom Swarovski looks. And Giovanna Battaglia for the diehard fashion people that listen to climbing in heels. You would know her. She is a fashion icon has been for many, many years. And she's a creative director of Swarovski for the last few years and transformatively has really made it sort of like into the design world in terms of actual wearable Swarovski in terms of gowns and everything else. And these gowns were truly, uh, masterpieces. I mean, Carly Kloss was like this pink, like goddess, like g- gardeny goddess. Yes. She was just like, and the way the crystals wrapped up and around her neck, it was like, yes, it's so- it like a vine. Yeah. It was, she Stunning. really perfect. Unbelievable. Talking about leaning into the theme and the actual curation that's happening for the Costume Institute, I yes. really want you to talk about Kendall Jenner yes. and her look and why it's iconic and important. <laughs> yes. And and also to go back to Irina, the thing about Irina's look, again, does it touch on the theme? Sure. But she just looked extraordinary. I loved the Swarovski on the neck. I love the Swarovski on the wrists. I yep. just loved it all. She always takes something and puts grit in it and just gives it such an edge that she always looks just incredibly cool, but couture, if that makes sense. Totally. I think to bring everything back to the theme yes. of Met Gala and what yes, Kendall. the duration is, yes, exactly, for the Costume Institute is to talk about Kendall Jenner and what she Yes. Wore. So Kendall Jenner was super interesting because – she actually was the first person to ever wear this gown. And it was Alexander McQueen for Givenchy in the late nineties had never been worn before by anyone. And it was a true art piece and it was not allowed to be altered. And Talk about it was- <laughs> pressure. <laughs> exactly. I mean, by the way, it's also like, not that it's the same, but it's like how Kim wore Marilyn Monroe's dress. Like, I don't even know that I would ever be able to hold that for the night and be able to be like, no one touch me. No one hug me. Like, no, if you rip this crystal, I'm dead, you know, because she cannot alter that. But 
again, you know, she really went that sort of like Couture Maleficent vibe. But what was interesting about Kendall is then she changed twice afterwards for the after parties into another vintage McQueen that was like this butterfly gown that was just unbelievable. That was just very Kendall. Honestly, it was like short in the front, long in the back. Like angel wings almost. Angel wings. Exactly. And then I, but I do think some people really did go vintage. Like Emily Ratajkowski wore, obviously she was naked, but she did in fact wear a vintage Versace dress. Hers was vintage from, I want to say 2001. Um, It was an archival piece and um, clearly very transparent. And I think another thing to note is that transparency is not going anywhere. Nope, clearly not. We, We did see some butts. Yes, we did. We saw a lot of butts. We did see a lot of butts. I miscredited Nicole Kidman earlier about Balmain because I have to go honorable mention. A lot of the women last night um, were unable to climb the stairs. Yes. Because yes. of the fit of their gowns. Yes. Um, and a musical artist by the name of Tyla, who was wearing a Balmain creation, she was wearing like a strapless sand covered look, um, had to have um, a team of gentlemen lifting her up the stairs for photos, um, which I don't think we've ever seen before. And then I don't know if you saw this, but when she got to the top, um, they cut the bottom of the gown completely off so that she could walk around and enjoy her. I did evening. see that. And, <laughs> and, you know, nothing like having the creative director themselves, right? Take um, you know, there. be there and just cut the dress because better, better him than you. Absolutely. Didn't Wes Gordon do that with, with Carly one year? I believe he did. I and actually Carolina remember Herrera. that. Yes. I think he did. He cut or, or he cut the train off of her gown once she got through with, with the press line. <laughs> it's insane. I mean, it's insane. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, I think, I think what people do for the sake of fashion, I think is really illustrated best at the annual Met Ball. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And okay, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you who were or what were some of the looks that um, missed the mark for you. I can start. (laughs) Tell me. I I think Lana Del Rey is having a very big moment right now. She just headlined Coachella. She is this sort of style, stylish, fashion-y girl. And I liked what was going on. I just wish the way that they draped the fabric over the like horn yes. slash tree branches was a little Ye- less bulky. Yes. Yes. It, yes. It, yes. Because it to me, it there was something there, but it just missed a little bit in terms of like volume. And it was just like seemed a little not all quite thought out. A hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. I I think, listen, I'm never a fan of the, you know, it's funny. I sort of contradict a little bit. I think sometimes the way people consider fashion moments, Yeah, because to me, I would say a Nicole Kidman or a Kylie or a, you know, any, any of the ones that I loved from the Met to me is a moment an unforgettable moment more than someone who is wearing a sort of netting or a cage or something. I'm, and that's just me. And I think some people view fashion as, okay, who's the person that went the most out there? Who's the Cardi B? Who's the, you know, Katy Perry that comes in a cage or whatever, you know? And I, and I think, I think to each their own, and that's the beautiful thing about fashion But I think where I sit is somewhere in the middle of let's have a major moment and have drama and fashion and glamour, but let's also not necessarily look like we're in a costume, in a full costume, if that makes sense. And I think that's really what the Met is about. It's about interpreting a theme, right? however, however you feel. And so I think that's why it's always all over the place, you know, but yes, definitely not my favorite not your favorite definitely yeah. not my favorite i'm trying to think who else for me well you, you were know, also just sort of in general bummed about the men 
oh my God, the men really bummed me out. You know, yeah. Corey Gamble looked so handsome uh, next to Chris Jenner. Yeah. Tom Ford to me, obviously, is always flawless. I was a little sad about Chris Hemsworth. I felt that he should have, as a host, worn a tie, not an open shirt. I know he's Aussie, but you still need to wear a tie. Maybe he did once look a year. like he could jump on a surfboard. A hundred percent. Any given moment. A hundred percent. And listen, maybe that's like his jam, you know? Um, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm trying to think of any other men. Lil Nas, again, to me, it's not about a look at me spectacle. Um, so that wasn't my favorite. Right. Um, Lil Nas X. Uh, Bad Bunny was- certainly did yeah. an interpretation of the theme, being a coach mm-hmm. chair Mm-hmm. Um, he definitely went for that like goth yep. thing, I yep. think. Yep, indeed. Um, Chase Stokes went without a shirt. He yeah, he was in a full I think everything was like sequined, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Michael Kors. He he yeah, mm-hmm, he did. And um yes. Went and, for it. <laughs> yes, he did. He did, he did, he did. Your good friends, Tommy Hilfiger and D Oklepo looked stunning, gorgeous, stunning. Right? And Tommy was in a red jacket. He looked so handsome. And D was extraordinary. She was in like a embroidered, like almost like a, um, again, like I think it was a bit of a Maleficent, like, you know, running through the forest in a cape on a horse, you know, <laughs> kind of five. Like I was right out of a fairy tale to me. I totally agree. loved that. Totally, there agree. was a lot of designers I did not see on the carpet last night. Like I don't think I saw a Ralph Lauren moment. You know, okay. there was there was a lot I did not see. Shakira had a big red moment in West Gordon for Carolina Herrera. Yes, you know, I think there was. You know, honestly, it was so much Oscar De La Renta. It was so much John Galliano in yes. different iterations of himself ripping himself off. The Stella um, McCartney group definitely yes. looked like Stella, like a little yes. rock roll cool. Yes. The Chloe girls. The cool well, girls. The, the cool, cool girls, girls club. club. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Very minimal, fresh, clean. Yep. Oh, Chloe vibes. Exactly. Exactly. And your boy, um, Mark Jacobs, was, went went for the boudoir look. He did. I, we yep. talked about with Dua yep. Lipa. Indeed. Indeed, he did. And yeah, did it was quite nails, a nails, by the way? What'd you say? Did you see Mark's nails? I did not. Were they oh like gosh. so long? So long, full set. <laughs> really rocking him. it. I love him. Flacking around. Love it. Um, I love him. But yes, what an exciting night in fashion. It is, it is you know, the Super Bowl it for fashion sh- lovers. Sure is. It sure, sure is. And, you know, listen, I think at the end of the day, I think everyone has fun and it's incredibly glamorous and it takes, I mean, also note that like probably 90% of the women on the carpet had hair extensions put in for this. Yes. And they're probably taking them out today. There was a lot (laughs) of long, long hair. (laughs) Yes. And so, um, I just can't even imagine how long it takes like a Zendaya or a like, you know, it's wild. Right. It's yeah, absolutely wild. It must wild. be crazy. It must be crazy. Um, well, thank you for joining for our little Met recap. Thank you all so much for listening to Climbing in Heels. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the iHeart app, or wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss a single episode this season. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at, at Rachel Zoe and the show at Climbing in Heels Pod for the latest episodes and updates. I'll talk to you soon. Mwah. Thank you. 
¡Actívate porque llegaron los Power Penny Days de JCPenney! Con miles de ofertas de 5 a 25 dólares mientras duren. Como camisetas para toda tu familia a solo 5 dólares. Y las toallas de baño Home Expressions Quick Dry también están a 5 dólares cada una. Además, encuentra lo último en electrónicos pequeños de cocina a solo 19 dólares. JCPenney, vale la pena. Ofertas válidas del 22 al 25 de agosto en selección de estilos. Las ofertas Power Penny se excluyen de los cupones. Detalles en la tienda jcp.com.